And good morning. It's a beautiful morning out there. Welcome to the second hour of the Chris McCarthy Show. Honored to have uh, in studio with us my friend, America's Sheriff, Sheriff Tom Hodgson. Good morning, Sheriff. How are you, sir? Good morning, Chris. Good, thanks. I'm great to be here. If you want to watch us, you can on our YouTube channel. And of course, if you don't get a chance to hear the entire interview, we'll, we'll put this up online afterwards, as we always do. Um, so, Sheriff, had you have you in here for a couple of things. Want to get your I mentioned this in the first hour. Um, the horrible story in Weymouth about this immigrant. I believe he was a legal immigrant, but I'm not sure. But he is alleged to have committed a rape. He was arrested, charged. He got out on bail because the somehow or other the ICE documents, the the re ICE retainer didn't get to the to the lockup facility, and uh, now he he jumped he jumped bail. He's gone. He went back to Ghana. What what, do you, what are your thoughts? I know the details aren't all in yet, but what are your thoughts on the sheriff? Well, based on what we know so far and what we've read, um, it, it appears that the court did not send over the detainer with, with the individual when he went to Norfolk County on the bail. And right. Norfolk County, of course, had no idea right. uh, that this person had a detainer. And therefore, when the, when he, the bail came up, they, re they released him because it didn't have any indication that he should have been held for ICE. Um, if they determine, and I don't know that they have revealed anything yet, but in the course of looking at this, if someone in that courthouse intentionally took that detainer out of that file and and um, and did it to to assist this individual, right. it's, it's, that that I believe will fall under the probable cause to believe that person committed a felony under federal law. Mm -hmm. uh, but at a minimum, of course, they they should be both personally and professionally held accountable for if in fact it was done intentionally right. if it was something that an oversight somehow somebody it happened misplaced it could happen it could happen in our facility any facility where someone's releasing any somebody job. you miss yeah you miss you miss a uh, uh, a warrant from another community and, and you're releasing them when they complete their sentence it, it can happen but um, even then the the person responsible oftentimes is going to face some sanction internally sure uh, for for missing it but there's more to come on this, and it's going to be very interesting to see if, in fact, this was done intentionally, uh, what exactly went wrong. Because there's too many people out there being uh, seriously injured or killed. And this poor young woman was raped as a result of a failure somewhere in the system. Mm -hmm. And that's not okay. You can't undo it. Right. And uh, we need to get to the bottom of it so it doesn't happen again. You have been, of course, on the forefront of the uh, illegal immigration issue which we have to always delineate between legal and illegal because uh, people ha have decided now they've thrown the term undocumented out the window. They don't bother using that anymore because we figured that one out. The people have figured that one out. Right. Now they just call everything immigrants. Right. They lump in the legal with the illegal, which is a tremendous disservice uh, to people. So we always have to talk about illegal. We have to make sure we always use the term illegal. Sheriff, um, talk a little bit about this program that you're doing where you're trying to figure out who these people are. Yeah, well, we're we're actually we just did a training um, uh, a few months back where we brought in uh, members of our county local police departments as well as our own staff to uh, learn this new technique around uh, identifying imposters. Okay, uh, we know that the drug cartels, particularly the Dominican drug cartels, have been using um, fraudulent identifications that they've been able to obtain through Puerto Rico right. um, to to work their business in our country under the, under the name of someone else. Right. So what we've learned is that not only are there, we believe there's about 135,000 people in Massachusetts alone. 135,000 people. That are in our communities uh, with fraudulent IDs. Um, a good percentage of them are probably tied into the cartels. Right. Um, it's a way that they can, they can do their business. So um, we're now looking at um, not only what we do on the street uh, when police officers are stopping people there's certain techniques and things that they can they've now learned okay they, they can quickly identify these people but um, but also in the prisons now uh, we're going to be talking I'm going to be speaking with sheriffs around the country and encouraging them to run their databases and, s and under these these different um, red flags that we can identify okay pretty quickly will determine if someone's in there under a fraudulent ID. And we're, we believe we're going to find thousands upon thousands across this country. And 90, probably 98 to 99% of them will be illegal. But we're not 
targeting it based on being illegal. We're targeting it based on state law right. in, in, throughout the country where it's a felony to possess a fraudulent ID. Okay. So uh, this, is, um, this is something that's up and coming, and we think it's going to uh, be a force multiplier not only for us in law enforcement to identify these people before we have to go out and do investigations, but also – uh, with regards to working with our federal partners. Right. And you were just down in Washington talking with some of the congressmen about this, right? I was. I was speaking with com members of Congress about that as well as uh, the director of uh, Immigration Customs Enforcement. Um, speaking with Sheriff Tom Hodge, and I said if, if you're just joining us, you can um, catch this entire interview later on, on, our, on our website, WBSM. Um, and we are streaming it live. If you'd like to look at the sheriff and I, uh, you can on our, our YouTube channel. So... Sheriff, the um, some people have come have been attacking you lately. This is a bizarre thing for being too aggressive on protecting communities from illegal immigration. Your thoughts? Well, we I think those people who who feel that I've been too aggressive are people obviously that would like uh, to afford people who violate the laws the, this sort of bubble of protection that somehow that we in this country should adopt this philosophy that uh, and practice that anyone who violates our laws and happens to come across our border well once they're here well they ought to be able to stay mm -hmm. uh, that's outrageous of course and i took an oath as did every sheriff every law enforcement person across this country that we would support the laws of our commonwealth and the constitution of the united states and i have no intentions of doing anything less than that if you don't like the laws in this country then lobby your state legislature or Congress to change them. Right. But it, it is not your place or my place to decide if I don't particularly like it, I'll decide how much of it I want to enforce or not. Right. That's not my, my job. It's not my right. And so um, I don't – I think most people see where when people start start with this sort of, oh, he's, he's too aggressive, he's, you know, he shouldn't be involved in immigration and all this other nonsense, um, those people have a very different agenda. And I think mm – -hmm. The average person gets it people in this country want to be safe right right people elect people like you because they know that you're serious about protecting them right what would it what would it be if all of law enforcement suddenly just said you know what let's follow along with what those people think i mean we, we'd have total anarchy we'd have chaos we'd have we'd have more victims than we already have because nobody would care uh and um and we can't have that we can't have that and to the criticism that you spent too much time in Washington, it occurs to me that people might not understand that the Congress wants to hear from people like you well, uh, and, and from local people who are on the ground who deal with us on a day-to-day -day basis in the jails, the gangs, the, the illegal immigration, w what activities they do, how they network. These are, this is the information that you have and Congress is looking for. Am I correct on that? Yeah, you're correct. And not only that, look, I, I'm not going to apologize for taking on a leadership role that, that I, I, I told, promised the people I would do. Um, the National Sheriff's Association, I mean, the sheriffs all over the country, like myself, who are on the Immigration Committee, we have, within the organization, we have, uh, we have uh, uh, law enforcement committees, we have, uh, we have a whole host of different committees that, that we serve on. And, and for these people who, who suggest, oh, the only job the sheriff has is, is to manage the jails, no, it's, it, it's not. Uh, the, the, the job, if people read the job description, they'd understand what the role of a sheriff is. And that's why sheriffs across this country are involved in the various aspects of the National Sheriffs Association. And so, um, as I said, we have, we have lots of committees and uh, sheriffs across this country. I'm not the only one. There's sheriffs all over the country who go to Washington mm -hmm. because if, you don't, if you're in Congress, you don't have your tentacles in, and boots on the ground every day. Right. You need to hear from the people that do. Right. And you know what? I'm going to stand up for the people of this county and make sure that everything I can do from the immigration front, MS-13, sex trafficking, human trafficking, and the drugs that are pouring over our borders, that we stop it. Right. Because it, it, we're all border states now. Right. We're all border states. Right. And we're all being impacted by this, this, uh, this onslaught of immigration, illegal immigration that's been going on. We're speaking with Sheriff Tom Hodge. We're going to take a very quick break uh, here, and then we come back. If he'd be happy to take your phone calls at 508-996-0500. And then I want to ask him about a, a story that uh, he probably won't take a victory lap on it, but I think the rest of us will. We'll, we'll be right back.
Okay, welcome back. Um, I'm Chris McCarthy. Thank you for joining us. If you'd like to uh, join me, we have the sheriff here in the studio. He'll, he's willing to answer your questions, hear your comments. The phone number is 508 996 0500. You need those headphones to hear. Um, before we go to the phones, I just want to point out. So Kevin Cullen, who's the who I think was, I think that's what he was, was a Globe columnist. It's not official yet, but I think he's all done. Um, it was caught making up stories about the marathon bombing, claiming that he was there. He wasn't there. That he's having post-traumatic stress when he saw a fire in Mattapan because it reminded him of the bombing, of which he wasn't there. He's been caught lying to the BBC. Of course, a lot of people think when you call overseas now, it stays overseas, but that's really foolish. But Kevin Cullen said these things about our friend America's sheriff when he, uh, when the sheriff a year ago proposed locking up mayors and uh, officials who allow sanctuary cities, promote sanctuary cities in their communities. The sheriff went down to Congress and recommended that they were violating federal law and that they should be locked up. Uh, Kevin Cullen took much offense to that and in his very sanctimonious way uh, says this about the sheriff. Details have never been lock em ups. He, that's his nickname for Tom. They've never been lock em ups strong suit. Sheriff, what do you <laughs> what do you think today as we learn about Kevin Cullen, Kevin Cullen and his details? Well, <clears throat> I guess I guess he he um, sort of underscores the thing that people have seen an awful lot of in the media, and that's the, the fake news. Um, obviously, if he he wasn't there and he was making those kinds of things up, it was uh, I guess it wasn't important enough for him that he be reporting honestly. Right. Um, I I don't have a. You know, you're, you're 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 far too generous here, Sheriff. I. Uh, wait till Howie gets a hold of this later this afternoon. Um, yeah. This is just a great story. Yeah, it's you know, look, there there are. Uh, I'm not uh, obviously the the, the, fa uh, the favorite for the Boston Globe. They're far right. more liberal than I am, and that's right. fine. I got I have no problem with that. I think I think that that that's what makes the world go round. We have different points of views, um, but when you when you suggest something like I guess he suggested in that article, I didn't even remember it. Yeah. But uh, and then you know hypocrisy, uh, you know across the board, it doesn't really give you much credibility. Right. Right, you're uh, you're very generous, sure. I, I was hoping for a little, uh, 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 but but that's okay. You you, <laughs> that, you, you, you have to ma maintain your, the, the the strong position that you have, and I, I, you're more dignified on this than I am. I just think uh, it's hilarious, to be honest with you. That he, here it is, where you're su he's ridiculing your suggestion a year ago. His career is gone, essentially, I would think, for lying about a, the, the most one of the most horrific terrorist events in American history. Meanwhile, the Secretary of Homeland Security is suggesting your your is, repeating your suggestion to Congress as to what they ought to do with sanctuary city mayors, right? Yeah, and, and, and um, well, I, I, I'm not sure that the career might be, be gone. There's always MSNBC. <laughs> He's right, folks. That's where Brian Williams is now in. Mike Barnacle, who had that exact job that Kevin Cullen just is about to lose. Wow. So that, that's pretty good stuff. Uh, okay, well... As, as, as always, when Sheriff Hodgson comes in here, he's more than happy to take your call, so we're going to do that now. Good morning. Thanks for holding your live on the radio with Sheriff Hodgson. Uh, good day, Chris. Uh, good day, Sheriff. Good Sheriff morning. Freud checking in from Chappaquiddick. I'm sure I speak for all the listeners and all the caller broadcasters to WBSM when I say that you have really heightened our awareness of the power of the informed educated voice on talk radio and that's a debt that that it will be difficult for us to repay to you uh and forgive me i'm a little bit nervous i always get nervous in the presence of greatness and that's the way fortunately chris is on the air <laughs> beg your pardon i said fortunately chris is on the air <laughs> yeah right <laughs> but in any event uh very few uh, people in your position and uh, and I will also say that very few people understand what the position of a, of a sheriff is, but very few people in your position have the uh, acuity to point out that talk radio is our, our last chance to be heard. You know, David Horowitz is an outstanding uh, conservative uh, uh, talker, and uh, Chris is well aware of David Horowitz and and uh, these uh, uh, listeners call in. What can we do? You know, what can be done to save this republic, to restore it, uh, to keep it from the demise that began in the early twenties with the Nineteenth Amendment? Okay. Thanks for the call. Uh, 
Yeah, he, he's very. That's one of our regular callers, and he's pointed out regularly that what you point out, which is that talk radio is the way that, that people like callers, but also people like you, elected officials, can go around the go around the mainstream media and just talk directly to people. Yeah, and it, it gives it gives the public a forum to be able to to hear to hear what um, you know from their elected officials or from others in the community, other people who are in, in different leadership positions and make their own determinations uh, about where they think we should be going if they don't think that that's a good way to go. But as well, it's important for the for the individuals to be able, who are in an office, to be able to expound upon whatever the, the, the either the criticisms or, or suggestions are and what have you. So talk radio, I believe, is going to be the uh, medium that's going to really move this, this nation uh, back to the the values that I think most people are looking for. And it, it takes the filter away, you know, at least right. at least how that's how we do it here on WBSM. Which we, we have Sheriff Tom Honchin in, in the studio with us. Uh, he's taking your calls at 508-996-0500. Good morning. Thanks for holding your live with Sheriff Hodgson. Yeah, I'd just like to say the Sheriff has given us more than just a few years. He's given us quite a few years of good leadership, and leadership is lacking in the state. And I'm just happy that the fat cat... Uh, Politicians don't know how to handle you because you don't bring politics into your message, and that's a wonderful thing. And I just wish you great success. Well, thank you, caller. You're nice thank, to say that. Uh, yeah, you know, it's it, that's I, always been a problem. I think overall, people have gotten kind of frustrated with how how much things are pushed through a political filter. Mm -hmm. uh, I've always told people who are running for office, look, people may not always they're not going to always agree with you. But if they know that what you're doing, you really believe in your heart of hearts and based on the information you have in your job, mm -hmm. that you really believe this is the right thing, they still may not agree with you, but they'll at least appreciate the fact that you're doing it based on convictions mm -hmm. and not on putting your finger up in the air and seeing which way you really need to go for yourself right. if, you think, if you're thinking politically. And so... Um, Look, it's, uh, you've it's never, you've never changed your tune as to who you are in the entire time you've been in office, and you've been elected overwhelmingly in what what, what was, but is no longer a Democrat county. If you, I think you, the well, Republicans owe you some credit there as well. Well, I, th you know, I, I've always believed that the people, certainly around the law enforcement aspects, the people, they don't care whether you're Democrat or Republican. They just want to be safe. They want their families to be safe. They want their communities to be a place that can thrive without without being marginalized by people who are who are coming through breaking into their homes or or dealing drugs or what have you and um what, any of us who have the opportunity to to do what we can to move the needle on that we should excellent we're speaking with sheriff tom hodge we have him in studio if you're just tuning in you will be able to catch the entire interview um commercial free on wbsm.com later in the day when our, our tech staff has it up good morning thanks for holding your live with sheriff tom hodgson top of the morning to you uh, they call me Johnny One Note here, Sheriff. Uh, if you like my real name, I'd be more than happy to call the station and leave it uh, so that you know who I am. I know I'm sure you have my phone number over there. But, you know, here's my problem I have, Sheriff. Sure. Uh, I voted for you, I believe, just about every election that you've had. And while I understand, I know that, you know, this country needs help from people maybe like you. You know, and I know you have to run around the country and you're, you're, you're trying to save immigration, drugs, and all this coming to the country. I, I just want you to know the reason why I voted for you each time, and I expect to vote for you again. May, I, I don't know, maybe maybe not. The reason I expect to run for you for was to be the sheriff of Bristol County. Now, I, like I said, I understand you had to run around and do all these things, but why you been doing that, sheriff? Your, 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 your sheriff's department here in Bristol County, which we pay the taxes for and we vote for you, hasn't been doing so well. In what, in what regard? We've had color. a suicide <clears throat> problem in the jails, <clears throat> right? And every day on this radio, I hear the name Carlos Raphael, Carlos Raphael, Carlos Raphael. What I don't hear and what I want to know from you after I hang up is, the two employees, I believe it was two or three employees that were working for you while you're traveling around the country are smuggling money out of this country, breaking the law as law enforcement officers, okay, under your command, yep. Yep. running money out of this country, and who knows what else, with this Carlos Raphael, how come we never hear about them? What has happened to them? 
And what have you done to stop this from happening again in the future in your department? Thanks for the call. Th those are great questions, caller. First of all, let me just tell you, um, um, my my involvement, the fact that I'm, I'm involved in, in n not just running the, the operation at the jail, but also involved with the national sheriffs and doing things that need to be done that impact our communities in, in working with Washington. Um, I would tell you, uh, doing all of that, I don't have to do it. I do it because it's the right thing to do and it does help the people of our county. But more importantly, I think the first thing that you need to know is we're nationally accredited, not once. We've been nationally, nationally accredited, I believe, uh, uh, two or three times. And not only that, our last national accreditation about a year and a half ago, we're one of the very few in the nation who received 100% on all our operating standards within uh, within our uh, operations. So I have a great staff. Uh, my people are, we wouldn't be getting a, a national accreditation at 100%. Our medical unit, uh, who's responsible for mental health and, and you, you cited the suicides. Look, we detox on average per day, 7.2 people per day detox in our facility. MassAC, the Ma Massachusetts Alcohol Substance Abuse uh, Addiction Center, uh, has about 200 and some odd, um, maybe 200 on average people in there every day. Those are involuntary commitments made by the courts. They detox 8.1. We're 7.2. We also have uh, facilities that, uh, like every sheriff's department, who've been turned into mental health facilities, but I will tell you, even on the on the on the uh, medical accreditation through the National uh, Corrections uh, Healthcare Accreditation, we we year after year have been nationally accredited. They've looked at everything: suicides, mental health treatment, all of those things. And in fact, when the federal government came in, and we're 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 actually reviewed every year by the federal government, very strict standards. We've had national accreditation once every three years. We have DOC twice a year that come in and inspect this and the correctional health care. So, so we're overly uh, regulated, which is great. Um, but when the federal government came in, they said about our medical unit, one of the inspectors said to the other, this, this facility in Bristol County, when we go back and report should be the model for the entire nation because of how advanced our medical program was in spite of the the lack of facilities and lack of investment in the infrastructure that that not only us but the other sheriff's departments across the country and the state need because they turned us into the mental health facilities so um the other thing i would just add is that it's it's isn't it interesting that that we are the only ones in the state that created a behavioral unit that has actually helped these people with mental health issues to work their way into becoming more more normalized behaviors and that the other sheriff's departments send their worst people to us so that they can be um, they can be um, uh, involved in a program in fact Middlesex sent us one that they absolutely couldn't handle uh, within about uh, three months, the individual went back and they've never had a problem since. Now, let me jump to the other point which you made about uh, the Carlos Raphael situation. Um, obviously, any agency can, can have uh, situations where somebody steps outside our, our standards, uh, our professional standards, and we're never happy about that. It's not something that... Um, that we feel good about because it f reflects on everyone that works in our department and we have a great department uh, one of the best in the nation and that's because of the people that work there but we have 650 employees and uh, like any agency you see it all the way up right now I think you're probably watching it with the FBI right um, the and th that's a that's a phenomenal uh, organization the the people who work for the FBI these agents they are incredibly dedicated honest hard-working people but the fact that you may have uh, some in that organization who have stepped outside the realm uh, does not reflect on the fact that, well, in this case, if you're talking FBI, you're at the top. But, 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 but those things happen in organizations, and you look at it, you say, could we do something differently? What, what could we do to prevent it from happening again? 
And, uh, and we do that in every situation. And we have employees like everywhere else where sometimes something falls outside the realm of, of the standard. And, um, and as I said, um, th it's part of life. It's, it's human behavior. And uh, something, fortunately, in our case, we don't see a lot of. Is it, is it fair to say, Sheriff, that you probably feel the most betrayed of anybody in that entire situation? Well, yeah. I was, you know, obviously very disappointed as to what happened. Um, it's not something that I think anybody um, could have really predicted because uh, of the individuals that, that were involved. They had good reputations and been with us for quite some time. Um, so, uh, but as I said, um, it's unfortunate and these things can happen in any organization. It certainly doesn't, uh, uh, it, you can't marry the, the fact that I may be at a meeting in Washington and somehow if I was here that, that that wouldn't have happened. But certainly if I didn't look at those things afterwards and try to find solutions to see if there was something we could do differently, well then, yeah, as an administrator, I would be falling short of my, my obligations. All right, great. Th uh, thanks, thanks for addressing that, Sheriff. Uh, 508 996 we'll go back to the phones. Good morning. Thanks for holding your live with Sheriff Hodgson. Good morning, Chris. Good morning, Sheriff. Hi, caller. Um, first off, let me tell you, I actually really did vote for you every single time, and I will in the future. Well, thank keep you. Keep running. Thank you so much. Um, and you, you, you answered my question for me. You have 600 and some odd employees. Yes, about 650. I ran a business with 355, and I didn't know every single one and what they were doing every single minute of the day. Yeah. God bless you. At least it wasn't hidden. It wasn't thrown under the carpet They're like most politicians and many, many things that do in this country. It was bought to light, and they went to they went to jail. It's done. Yeah. Well, and and I would tell you that that, that you raise a good point, caller. I would tell you that, as you well know, if you had three hundred some odd employees, it's it, impossible. Yeah. Well, not 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 only that, but 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 the point is, you have you do we have great managers. And and you yes. and and you have to empower those managers uh, to hold to your standards, and mine do. Uh, they do a great job, and um, and I'm very I, very proud of them. I, I'm I'm I am proud of what our our Bristol County has done compared to what many of the other counties are trying to do, and many of them I I, I know it for a fact emulate what you've done here and and hope to get theirs running the same way. Uh, on the last note, we've. I believe we're now deploying a few uh, National Guard down on the um, the border. Yes. And I'm 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 ecstatic about it. I think we should. I think we actually should build some bases down there, and we're going to spend money for the military anyhow, and training and everything else. Let's put them down there and have them trained down there. And I'll guarantee you, every one of those states, maybe not California, would be happy to have that in their economy and boosting their economy, and yet protecting the country. Thanks for the call. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a good point. You know, yeah. any, any force multiplier uh, that gives the Border Patrol people uh, the opportunity to, to uh, better sort of get a rifle shot as opposed to a shotgun shot. At, right. At the not other, literally. Not literally, of course. <laughs> but but the, the Unless, having National Guard down there, well-trained people who, who are eyes and ears and can right. be more visual and notify Border Patrol rather than Border Patrol trying to cover everything – it's it's what needs to be done and i and i commend the president for for doing it i was in a military police national guard unit if it was okay to send me to panama with a loaded weapon i don't know why i couldn't be on the south the southern border of this country i mean it seemed to me that it seemed to me that all the guys i ever served men and women i ever served we would think it was the proudest duty they could be they could be given you know and, and when you think about the guys that we've that we lost uh, joey camaro over here in new bedford who yeah. uh, was lost in when he was with the rhode island national guard we got a park name for him he was a new bedford police officer he died overseas i, I would much yeah. rather have him on the on the border uh protecting our country good morning thanks for holding your live with sheriff hodgson hi chris hi hi tom hi uh, excuse me hi sheriff uh, you know looking back over the years on illegal immigration here in New Bedford, uh, myself and and you, Tom, are the only two people. You got elected, I didn't, but we were the only two people that came out swinging on illegal immigration yeah. and how the adverse effects that it has that it has to uh, our community here in New Bedford and and other communities, but mostly here in New Bedford. Wondering if you were aware of the fact that. About five years ago, there was a report from the Department of Labor that we had lost 3,500 jobs here in New Bedford 
to undocumented workers, illegal immigrants. Thanks yeah, for calling, Mike. That's 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 a big big problem across the country, um, and um, and interestingly enough, a lot of the money that they that a number of them get, they send back to the country, so they're not even spending it here. Right. Um, we know about the the people who are in public housing, where law-abiding citizens who pay tax all their lives, uh, maybe have lost their spouse. Uh, now on fixed income are looking for senior housing and are told, hey, you have to wait because 28% of the people uh, in some of our cities are, are occupying those, those uh, apartments. Isn't that incredible? You knock on four doors, you, one of them right. is going to be an illegal alien. Right. So, so you know, th there's, there's an unfairness about it. There are five million people waiting behind the borders around the world respecting the laws of the United States who've done it the right way. And, you know, that's what we are about in America. That's right. how that's how we provide all these opportunities because we have the rule of law that protects democracy. We'll take a very quick break. When we come back, we'll go back to your phone calls with Sheriff Tom Hodgson. All right, welcome back. We have uh, Sheriff Tom Hodgson here, America's Sheriff, live in the studio. If you'd like to reach him, you can at 508-996-0500. If you're just tuning in now and you missed the start of the interview, you can catch it all on WBSM.com. We'll have it up later today. All right, back to the phones. Good morning. You're live with Sheriff Hodgson on WBSM. Sheriff Hotshot Hodgson. How are you're you? You're the best. You are a real man. Thanks for what you do. Well, thank you, Carly. You, you made my day. Thanks, Deb. Um, yeah. She, unfortunately, she lives in Rochester. Well, that's a good place. Just outside live. of the county. Oh, it's God's country. Yeah. God's country. Well, that's uh, All right. Back to the phones. Thanks for holding your live with Sheriff Hodgson on WBSM. Hey, how you doing? Uh, good morning. Uh, <laughs> Sheriff Hodgson, and uh, I want to commend you on um, the work that you do every day. People don't know what it is really to uh, run a place like you do and keep try to keep everything in order. Um this whole thing with the immigrants, I mean, I've called back before, but I'm still waiting on some kind of legislation, some law that we can go after these businesses that are hiring people that are immigrants, illegal immigrants, because there's more than one factor. They're here illegally, and the people that employ these people kind of abuse them also. So yeah. until, like I said, until we can fix whatever we can at home, put laws in place that find people, companies, and uh, be able to shut them down for that simple reason of hiring people.
people that are illegal. We're never going to be able to stop it. Hey, thanks for the call. Well, he, he made, the yeah. caller makes a great point. I, I was just, as I had mentioned earlier, I was meeting with members of Congress uh, this past week, and one of them was the chairman of the Judiciary, uh, um, Congressman Goodlatte. He has a bill that's been pending that does exactly that, in addition to the other aspects that law enforcement's been asking for for the security uh, related to immigration reform. And um, so anyone out there that is willing to either call, send an email or whatever to uh, their members of Congress here in Massachusetts and telling them that to, to pass the Goodlatte bill, that would definitely be uh, very, very useful and helpful uh, because in that bill is what they call E-Verify, which is a uh, requirement by businesses to verify people that they have mm -hmm. in their in their businesses uh, so that they're they're um, they're not hiring people who who are illegal right and um, they're able to determine whether or not they should should be able to hire them. because there are the people who come here illegally to do illegal things by that I mean uh, the, the, the human trafficking the the drug sales the, the gang operations and then there are people who come here and do illegal things in the sense of they steal IDs and they work but um, and the reason they do, they, and if they didn't have the employees and the jobs, they, they wouldn't come here. They wouldn't be able to s sustain themselves. Well, yeah, but, but the caller makes a, a very good point, which is um, a number of these people, first of all, it's unfair to the legitimate businesses because they're paying their, their payroll tax on, on legitimate workers, whereby uh, these big companies are, are undercutting our legitimate companies by, by not paying the, the uh, union rate. They're not paying uh, for for health care. They're they're fraudulently saying that they have these things um, covered, and they don't. And if somebody gets hurt, they drop them off at the hospital and drive away. The person has no insurance. Uh, this this has been going on, and it's going. I mean, there were seven people that painted on the uh, Braga Bridge that had the same social security number. Uh, really? Oh yeah. And uh, the, the there are there are places being built by people who are here illegally. I know one town hall that was being built in our county. Uh, where they were using the wrong nails, and they had to start to pull it apart again, and and um, and it so happened there was somebody there from the union that was listening at the, at the selectmen's meeting that night, and one of the selectmen said, "I thought it was funny having a company called U-Haul Construction because they were coming up every day to work in a U-Haul truck and coming out of the U-Haul truck." Really, and uh, and so what was what was the reason that the, the when the inspectors went there they told the clerk of the works, "Hey." You need to pull those nails out. This building could collapse with the, the kind of nails you're using. So this is what happens. I mean, it's, it's, it's a public safety issue. It's an economic issue. It's unfair to, to legitimate businesses to undercut them and not let them compete fairly and get jobs for legitimate workers who are doing the right thing and paying their taxes and so forth. We're speaking with Sheriff Tom Hodgson. Um, if you'd like to speak to him, you can. Ask his, he'll take any question, clearly. 508-996-0500. Thanks for holding your live in WBSM with Sheriff Tom Hodgson. Hi, can you tell me where we can see the uh, certification report he's talking about that was 100%? Uh, where can we see that, and where can we see his budget so we can see what's going on? Oh, you, good question. Yeah, good question. You can, you can find our budget uh, online um, under um, at the Comptroller's website. And the other thing uh, for the state, and the uh, as far as the... Uh, national accreditation, it would be the American Correctional Association. Uh, that is the uh, the accrediting agency that... I also think if you all. Google it, you'll be able to read the news articles yeah. that, 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 that uh, cover the report yeah. as yeah. well. Um, so so the, for the budget, it's the Comptroller's Office for the state of Massachusetts, and it's the American Correctional, Cred American Correctional, Correctional, Correctional Association. Association. And Google. I mean, let's face it. Today, yeah. Today's the energy. Just Google it. Some, you'll, you'll come up with a report. But that's a good question. Thank, thanks for asking that. And I, I know the sheriff's proud, if you, be proud to have you read that report. Absolutely. 508 uh, 996 Good morning. Thanks for holding your live WBSM with Sheriff Hodgson. Hey, good morning, gentlemen. And Chris, uh, thank you for bringing another good uh, guest. Thanks. I call him a customer, but it's a good guest. <laughs> I wanted to. I, I I just wanted to let the sheriff know I, I missed some. I caught some, but when they talk about the illegal immigration, and you know you know my pet peeve, right, Chris? Yep. Um, the guys that are working on the side, not doing it right, no names on their trucks, all that, and a lot of them people are illegals, and there's no mechanism to go to. To report these people, and, and it seems awful funny that 
There's no mechanism to do it. But yes, but we're also we're losing revenue as a community, as a state, and it's hard for me to understand because even the other day, I had in uh, this was classic. I had a customer. Oh, that's too much money, and blah blah blah. I can get some Guatemalans to do it, and I'm like, wow. Yeah. And I just told her, I says, well, go ahead. And she goes, well, will you still do this for me? And I'm like. Yeah, but the more I thought about it, the more it stuck in my throat, and, I, and I'm going to call and tell them, no, I'm not going to do it. And that's just one of the things that's huge in this area. That wants, and, and that's where actual crimes stop being committed, because you don't know, they're, they're undocumented, there's no way to trace them, and then these people get taken for a ride, you hear about it all the time with shoddy contractors, oh, he took a deposit, he never came back, some little old lady gets and this is all contributes to it, and there's really no mechanism to reflect this. Thanks for the caller. Yeah, and, and, and the caller's correct. And not only that, you have in <clears throat> a number of instances, there's somebody uh, that, that hires these people who are illegal that, that they call them jefe. The jefe is not legal either. It's what the jefe gets everybody for a company, say, for, to do the drywall aspects of a hospital or something, a newly built hospital. The jefe says, look, I'm not going to pay you all until, until the project's complete. All right. Then when it's all done, he gives each one of these illegal people that were working there, maybe for a month or two months, their paycheck. But this guy doesn't have a legitimate checking account. So what he does is he takes the check that the business that hired these illegals, okay. hired him to get the illegals, he takes that check, say it's $300,000. He goes to a legitimate business person in our area or somewhere in the United States and says, look, for 10% of this, I just need you to run down to the bank and cash it for me. And uh, he walks away with all the money and all the people that work for, for all of that. And this is going on all over the country. So it's, uh, there's someone mentioned it earlier, even the people that are here illegally that are working are getting uh, mistreated. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, and, and, and we can't have that. It's unfair all the way around. Good morning. Thanks for holding your live with Sheriff Hodge on WBSM. Hey, Chris and Sheriff. How are you doing today? How are you? Good. Yeah, it's uh, interesting. In the last month, I've uh, noticed a uh, one of the epicenters of illegal uh, immigration and uh, of, of horror, of aberration for the law has been uh, California. In the last month, uh, you're starting to see um, these communities uh, kind of uh, voting against um, sanctuary state laws. And uh, uh, you, you know, I, I'm used to traveling to California on a regular basis for business, and uh, it's turned it's turned into a pit. And uh, I mean, and I'm not lying. I mean, places that you used to ride your bicycle around, like Golden Gate Park, and you know, you, you're avoiding uh, human uh, waste and things like that. And um, you know, I, I think that uh, you're also starting to see the um, uh, chambers of commerce and the um, uh, the the, the uh, uh, groups that uh, promote tourism are uh, starting to um, recoil. So I, I mean, I, I'm I'm a little bit more optimistic. But uh, you know, what's your what's your take on it, uh, Sheriff? Thanks. Well, Thanks look, I, I think I don't think there's any question. We're starting to turn the corner. The American people finally f realized, hey, wait a minute. We this this is getting to a point where it's really impacting our quality of life out in California. For example, you have the attorney general who about a month and a couple of weeks ago had a press conference and said, all you law abiding citizens, you business owners, if you attempt to work with law enforcement, i.e. I ICE, um, we're going to prosecute you. So what, they're, what he's essentially saying is, I want you to go into the shadows and don't do what law enforcement has been asking the communities, I mean, the people in the communities to do all over this country, which is right. be our eyes and ears out there, help us, work with us so we can keep your community safe. He's now telling them, go in the shadows and don't work with us. And if you do, you're going to get prosecuted. And at the same time, the same, the, the, uh, same individual who's pro-sanctuary would say, let all the people who are here illegally violated our laws come out of the shadows and have a protective bubble and keep your hands off them. It's almost insane. Uh, we'll be right back. We're going to take a very quick break. We'll be back with more of Sheriff Tom Hodgson.
Hey, and we're back here with Sheriff Tom Hodgson. Um, we're not going to have a chance to take any more phone calls because it just we don't have enough time for it. But uh, just in closing, Sheriff, I know you had mentioned to me that you wanted to talk a little bit about Officer Gannon, who died down the cave. Yeah, what a tragic, really tragic situation. We had two two deputies just killed uh, yesterday now, ambushed in a restaurant. Um, uh, not here in, um, I'm not sure exactly what, where it was, but it was Florida, Florida, Florida it was reported uh, today. But Officer Gannon, what a what a bright young man he was actually an intern for us uh in 2007 he worked in our department uh in our human resources area and so um we uh i think all of massachusetts is very saddened by it we feel you know very very badly for him for his family right uh for the for the officers that work with him in the department and um and our thoughts and prayers of course go out to them we we had a delegation down there for the funeral of course as did many others uh, from around the state, but it was a very sad day for all of us in Massachusetts, and certainly for the law enforcement community. We're seeing more and more of this, and um, and I know that uh, Representative, I believe Representative Sean O'Connell, has filed a bill to make it a, 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 the death penalty for anyone that that kills an officer. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's part of the Republican Party platform this year as that's well. That's right. Yeah, that's right. And um, and so um, yeah, I, our hearts go out to the family and the community. Or, uh, the loss of a really great dedicated officer yeah no i know and we, we talked about this this morning off the air when you told me he'd worked for you know as an intern for your department just uh you know young man dedicated his entire life to law enforcement and uh as sad as it is he probably wouldn't exchange places with anybody else no, today no. right and that's that's the great thing about the people in law enforcement they they leave their homes every single day knowing that they face some unknown dangers and never knowing whether or not they're gonna they're gonna return home Hey, I want to thank you again, uh, Sheriff Hodgson, for coming in um, with us and spending some time and taking all those phone calls. It's always refreshing to get somebody who takes the phone calls and uh, continue, continue to do the, the great work that you do. Folks, if you uh, didn't get a chance to hear the entire interview, uh, it will be coming up on WBSM.com. And you can actually uh, look at it, too. You can watch us. If you're so, if you're so inclined to see the show, really want to ruin your day. <laughs> right, <laughs> you can watch us. <laughs> right, right, right. And uh, of course, uh, have a great day, Kevin Cullen. Have a good weekend. We'll, we'll, we'll be, we'll be back. Barry's, co Barry's coming in here in a few minutes, and uh, it's always adventurous with, 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 uh, with Barry. Thanks so much, folks. I, I'll see you tomorrow. I'll be in for Ken Pittman actually tomorrow as well. So, have a great day.